it was it hard for you maybe then because well you are the bass player and you had a rid- I, I knew was I it? knew that no matter who we got they were going to be a good drummer. Yeah. So no, but I, I mean for you I think you as a bass player and drum you really have to interconnect. Yeah, but I I don't really feel like Chris and I ever did as much as we could have. Okay. Especially in retrospect once you left. Um because it wasn't there was as much as a rhythmic chemistry or like a you know a a musical chemistry. I don't think that Chris was the kind of guy that I could call up and just be like you know, and we would on a very like basic level, but it never got deep. I never felt like I had this sort of bond that I have with Greg that just develops over different things and having similar interests or like, you know, I just feel like Chris is a little bit more reluctant, um, maybe a little bit more socially uh, timid, you know, whereas like I would go out and drink, Chris wouldn't. Okay. You know, I've, I let myself lose control, Chris never does. Uh, Chris is like, you know, pent up about one girl where I'm just kind of a little bit light, you know, lighthearted about a lot of different ones. You know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it without sounding, you know, like we're, we're, it's better or worse. It's not a judgment well, call at all. No, just, okay. just different. different, yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, with Gil in the band, it was like very quick, like, you know, nobody, you know, these guys aren't my girlfriend. You know, I don't have to relate to them on like this really, really intimate level, but there needs to be, I need to be able to get along with you while we're on the road. We need to be able to work together. We need to be able to um, creatively function together. So. Within a few hours of meeting Gil, I'm like, this dude is kill. You know, he's a killer dude. Let's have some fun. You know, and I think that's more of what it is. Where it is more fun, I feel like after the show we can hang out. Even if we get in a fight, it's usually like business or pleasure. You know, and usually if we're fighting about business, you deal with it. You talk about the numbers and you make it work, and then that's it. And you go out to dinner. But what is what is then different than now playing with him? I mean, for you, for the sound and for I think you know he's a, he's got a lot more groove. Um, you know, a natural like more of a reggae groove, more of just like a funk sensibility. Uh, so for me, it challenges me as a bass player to function again more as a rhythm, a, a classic rhythm section, more so than like a metal rhythm section. You know, um, you know, Chris and I, it was like, you know, we were just trying to sound like a steam train, mm-hmm. you know, and just machines, gears, just, you know, chewing you up. And Gil, it's a little bit different, you know, and I, I also feel like Gil has, um, He's got a more stylistic vocab, you know, his, his vocabulary is, more, is broader. So there's little things in different parts that, you know, to us it was always like a Latin part and then Gil made it a really Latin part, you know, live. So all of a sudden there's this kind of sense of humor about it because he'll just do these like kind of cliche things that work, but to me make me laugh because I'm just like, because now I'm trying to like weave my bass lines into them over like the next week or so if he keeps doing it. I'll keep working on it live, and eventually it'll like all of a sudden click. Is there is there one song, maybe more, huh? but is there is there is there one song that well that you that you uh, that you play differently now because of? Uh... Yeah, I think um, you know specifically uh, when good dogs do bad things. There's a big improvisational piece in the middle, you know, kind of like the middle end of mm-hmm. that, and uh, he really you know takes charge in that. Um, so for me, you know, it kind of allows me to like loosen up and it forces me like, man, he's shredding. I got to kind of like, I got to keep up in some way or at least like support it better. Um, you know, and there's other things just like even just the new songs because of the way Chris wrote them and then the way Gil plays them. You know, I, I'm more used to Gil playing it now, but there was definitely a, uh, a bit of a, you know, where Chris took the songs to 90%, Gil took them to 110 so, you know, and that, that came out on the recording for the most part. But, you know, back then there was also like this other kind of, you know, we thought that we had it together and we're kind of showing it to him and then he's showing it back to us, which made me go back into the studio and, you know, or when everybody else was recording and I thought that I had my stuff together, all of a sudden I'm like, no, I got to push it another, you know, 25%. It's not like Gil has to keep up with us. I have to keep up with him now. He's because he's just... Because he's new and I think he... Yeah, and he was just fresh and excited and more prepared than we thought he would be. So, 